today, I will bring to light the enduring importance of one of history's most renowned writers, William Shakespeare. And in doing so, I will thoroughly analyse how the intertextual conversation between Shakespeare's 1593 historical tragedy King Richard III and Al Pacino's 1996 docudrama Looking for Richard reveals corresponding and distinct contextual ideas and values in their societal contexts. And here's a little summary today of what I'll be covering in my discussion. And without further ado, let's get started. Conversations between literary texts consistently mirror substantial paradigm shifts in societal ideas and values associated with power and ethicality through the representation of multifaceted characters' capabilities to divert the audience's awareness of societal disarray in their postmodern world. Transcending his Elizabethan context of providentialism through his embodiment of the antagonist King Richard III as a catalyst for corruption in his dramatic play King Richard III, Shakespeare raises significant ambivalences between providentialism and one's Machiavellian tendencies to disrupt monarchical balances in pursuit of authority. Distinctly, Pacino's docudrama Looking for Richard analyzes Richard's duplicitous internal psyche, focusing on the conflict between morality and uncontrolled individual will in the director's secular American society. Contextual ideas, including Machiavellian inclinations for control, and responsiveness to human nature are thoroughly explored through Richard's convoluting villainous character, establishing broad intertextual conversations between both texts about manifested societal issues, including political duplicity and corruption in contemporary society. Both composers' accentuations of socio-political consequences associated with Richard's reliance on Machiavellianism for seizing power succinctly reveals their intertextual conversation on the manifestation of corruption in both an Elizabethan and postmodern society. Shakespeare's illustration of Richard's mendacity in his providential Elizabethan context elucidates the antagonist's calculative interpretations of characters' hameshes, that is, flaws, downfalls, and methodical schemes to stimulate England's monarchical imbalances. In the Elizabethan era, the only way that Richard could become king was through marriage, and he does that through seducing Lady Anne. Richard's seductive dialogue towards Anne during the play's wooing scene, Nay, do not pause, for I did kill King Henry, but t'was thy heavenly face that set me on, establishes dramatic irony as audiences witness the immediate success of Richard's manipulative, fastidious means of suppressing her grief. Furthermore, the substantial extent of Richard's dependence on Machiavellianism in pursuit of kingly authority underpins the prevalence of deceit within the Elizabethan landscape. Similarly, Looking for Richard focuses on the psychological intricacies behind Richard's internal villainous character through Pacino's alternating roles as actor and director. These fluctuational roles are depicted through close-up shots of Pacino's discussion on Richard's character and him reenacting the Anne wooing scene in a black cap. Highlighting the docudrama's conceptualization of Richard's complicated schemes towards attaining power. Resultantly, Pacino's meticulous application of method acting broadly reveals the manifestation of corruption in current politics through a more facile appropriation of Richard's multifaceted human nature. Therefore, both texts underpin the detrimental effects of exploiting Machiavellianism for seizing power through their intertextual conversation of Richard's convoluting antagonistic strategies of shaping modern audiences' perceptions on the manifestation of socio-political issues in contemporary society. Although substantial emphasis on Richard's villainy classifies him as a mere embodiment of abstract evil, both texts establish a two-dimensional perspective on human nature, through the antagonist's internal self-confrontations of his Machiavellian propensities. In the play's Elizabethan world, Richard's misanthropic psyche eventually results in the antagonist's self-contemplation of the uncontrollable extent of England's monarchical downfall. Through his iniquitous deeds against religious morality, Shakespeare's employment of the soliloquous paradox during Richard's mental conflict, <sighs> Alas, I hate myself because of the hateful deeds I've committed. I am a villain, but I'm lying. I am not a villain. Induces an apprehensive tone among readers as they develop resonances with their multidimensional personalities and the villain's fragmented psyche. Additionally, Pacino's Looking for Richard revitalizes Shakespeare's transcendent messages of humanity's societal trajectories based on human nature as it is now. During the street interview between Pacino and a homeless man, a close-up shot of the interviewee's bold facial expressions and his impactful speech. Intelligence is hooked with language. When we speak with no feeling, we get nothing out of our society. We should speak like Shakespeare. He did more than help us. He instructed us. 
cleverly links his first-hand experiences with difficult living standards among a technologically advanced American society to Shakespeare's extensive understanding of human psychology across multiple societies. In effect, a more demystified perspective of Shakespeare's value in contemporary society provides a redolent assertion for individual change, evoking the modern audience's ontological questioning of their own human nature. Thus, both texts challenge people's awareness of the manifestation of societal issues in their modern society through reinforcements of Shakespeare's intelligent embodiment of Richard's fluctuational human psyche as an extrapolation of humanity's future trajectory. Overall, the intertextual conversation between King Richard III and Looking for Richard extensively reflects paradigm shifts in various societal ideas and values linked to power and morality through both texts' examinations of Richard's intricate Machiavellian psyche. The text's embodiment of Richard as a paramount stimulant for corruption raises significant discussions on his capabilities to manipulate human desires not merely in an Elizabethan society of monarchical strife, but also within a more contemporary secular society of drastic socio-political changes. As Shakespeare's transcendent understanding of humanity is revitalized through superficial demonstrations of Richard's convoluting character, modern audiences are reinformed of prevalent societal issues through more responsive mindsets towards their postmodern world, and the writer's enduring didactic purpose in foreshadowing humanity's future state. Well, that sums up my video on why Shakespeare still matters. Thank you for listening.